Hello everyone, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming, bringing you another Diablo 3 video. Today we are bringing you the Monk Legacy of Dreams Wave of Light build. This is the build that we put a poll up asking you guys what you wanted to see, and this was the winner for this week. So here we are bringing you this build. So as I said, it's the Legacy of Dreams Wave of Light build, so it's a lot of this. And you just watch everything blow up. So this is the S tier pushing build for monks this season in season 24. It has potential to do solo solo greater rift 150. It's a lot of fun to play. It's got some mobility. It's got that explosive period. Um, the way it works is basically, as you can see down here, I have my convention of elements. Uh, we are just waiting for the lightning to come up and then you basically do all your bursts there. It is an AOE type build. So there's my lightning, so then I would just be spamming. Uh, and it's an AOE build, so that means we wanna get big packs together. You wanna gather them all up during your downtime. And then as soon as the you're getting into your lightning, you wanna proc a Oculus Ring from your follower, jump into it for your lightning rotation and go crazy and just blow everything up. So before I jump into the items, I do just want to iterate that because it is a legacy of Dreams build, we do need to have the Legacy of Dreams gem leveled, obviously. Um, get up to max there at uh, 99. So basically the way the gem works is when you do not have any set bonuses equipped, every legendary item you have increases your damage dealt by a certain percent, and it also reduces your damage taken by 2%. And if the item is an Ancient or better, so an Ancient or Primal or Ethereal, the bonus is doubled. So ultimately we want to have all Ancients and all 13 slots to get the maximum damage bonus as well as the damage reduction bonus. Okay, so because the build is based around the wave of light, we wanna focus on items that are going to enhance that. So we want the Zoe's Krin's Gaze. Um, so we want this helmet because it increases wave of light damage by up to 150%. And it also, wave of light is now cast at your enemy. So it casts out the enemy instead of on top of you. So you can do a ranged attack. So I can throw it over there. Whereas prior, it would just be cast on top of you like that. Uh, then we want Lefebvre's Siloquy. So the shoulders. So it's because Cyclone Strike reduces your damage taken by up to 50% for five seconds. So this is a survivability item. For our neck, we are using Squirt's Necklace for the ability to, to, to deal double damage if we haven't taken damage for a while. This is incredibly handy if we find a shield pylon. Uh, for the chest, there's two different ways we can go here. So we can use the Aquila Kiras, where we take reduced damage when we're uh, above a minimum of 90% uh, resources. So I have a 94% roll in this one. I'm looking for a better one. 94% is pretty bad. We want to get 90 if we can. So you can use that. The alternative is, um, because if you're using Aquila, you're going to be a lightning build. The alternative is, is you can use Cinder Coat because it has that built-in fire damage and you can roll fire damage instead. So I'm using the Aquila, so I'm going lightning, but there is the ability or the opportunity to go fire. So then you would just swap that out and then just make sure on your bracers and your pants that you're rolling fire instead of lightning to maximize your damage. For the Bracers, I have Bindings of the Lesser Gods. So this is enemies hit by my Cyclone take 200% increased damage from my ally for 5 seconds. Um, and the Split Fire allies gain 5 times the bonus, but anyway. So that's, you can have that. The alternative Bracers you could use is Pinto's Pride. So Wave of Light also slows enemies by 80% for 3 seconds and deals up to 150% increased damage. And that's just basically a kiting. Uh, bracer that you can wear so I can say you wear either one because whichever one you're not wearing the other one goes into your cube so because I have primal bindings I have my pintos in the cube for the belt we are going to be using the witching hour because it maximizes our dps it's the best dps belt uh, because it's got attack speed and the crit hit damage so we want that the gauntlets, we're using the stone gauntlets for survivability. So getting hit increases your armor by 50%, but reduces your movement speed by 15% and its attack speed by 20 and it can stack up to five times. So this is to, uh, just like I said, for survivability. Um, when we have our uh, epiphany up, 
even though we could be at five stacks of this, we'll still be able to move. And with the obsidian ring that we're also going to be using, it should be up fairly frequently or almost all the time. So then this really won't be um, an issue. Again, it's just for the extra armor for survivability. And because we also will have dashing strike, if we do get frozen, like um, immobilized, we can easily just dash out and then it'll fade away and we'll be able to move again. For survivability, we're also going to be wearing unity. So this splits the damages with split between all wearers. And because our follower is going to be wearing a unity, we are basically just get a free 50% damage reduction. And it's got the, the added bonus of having increased damage against elite. So that's always sweet. Uh, for the other ring, it is going to be the Convention of Elements. So, of course, gain up to 200% increased damage to a single element for four seconds. And so, as we can see here, it goes, it, you know, we have our four seconds here and it goes through the different elements. So, depending on whether you're wearing Aquila and going Lightning, we want Lightning. Or if you're wearing Cinder Coat, you'll be looking for Fire Damage and that will be your your uh, burst windows, if you will, to kill everything. So of course, remember, you gotta pay attention to what the cycle is before your actual, whether it's lightning or fire, and you wanna start spamming them to try to proc the Oculus Ring so when your power cycle does come up for those four seconds, you can jump into the Oculus Ring and get that extra up to 85% damage from the ring on top of everything else. We're also going to be wearing the Blackthorn's uh, legs here. So they went and added the elemental affix to these pants. So before people would have been having to make a witch doctor to get swamp lands and then just re, uh, and then wearing them on the monk or the other characters because of the elemental damage. But now the Blackthorn says that everybody can farm their own. You don't need the witch doctor to enable that. So because I'm going lightning, I have lightning damage rolled onto it. If I decide to switch to cinder coat, I'll be switching that over to fire. For the boots, we want the crudest boots. And so basically this allows mystic allies, summons two allies to fight by your side and they deal up to 200% extra damage while their forms are active. For the weapons, because the ethereal weapon has a chance to have properties of other weapons, the three weapon affixes that we're looking for is either Kairoshiro's blade. So this is increases the wave of light damage by 150%. When the initial impact of your wave of light hits three or fewer enemies, the damage is increased by almost up to 250. Uh, we also would want either Rabbit Strike, so Spirit Spenders that teleport you while Epiphany is active or also mimicked on nearby targets, dealing up to 450% damage. And then lastly, we also need Incense Torch of the Grand Temple, so it reduces the co Spirit cost of wave of light by 50%, but increases its damage by up to 550. Uh, and you do need all three of these in order to maximize the damage. I was missing Rabbit Strike, and so I was having a little bit of difficulty. It was still progressing, like I was doing 110s, um, and then I realized I was missing this item just when I was running a little bit earlier, and now I'm like clearing 120 pluses. Uh, my last one was like 125, It's so it's a lot. it was a big boost. Obviously, because it does up to another 450% damage, it was a little bit of a lapse on me. Like, I had the item, it just wasn't in my cube, so that was on me um, for not realizing that. And so then, um, so then, like I was saying, for our cube, uh, we you want to use either one of those three weapons. Uh, for the armor, we either want to use Pinto's Pride or we want to use Bindings of the Lesser Gods. And then for the ring, we're going to use Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. So as we're hitting things, everything is coming off cooldown for us. So for the skills that we're going to use, there is a little bit of a variation, um, whether we are going fire versus lightning. And then there is one other uh, spell that we can swap out and I'll get into that when we get to there. Uh, so we do want to use Mystic Ally. Uh, so your Mystic Ally has its damage increased by 50% for 10 seconds. And then we want to use an Air Ally. So when we use this, we gain 100 Spirit and that it increases our Spirit Regen by four. So basically, and during our spam phase or leading up to our spam phase, if we're low on our Spirit, we can pop this, get to 100% and just go crazy when we are in our cycle. Of course, here is our damage ability, we Wave of Light. Focus a wave of light that crushes enemies for 835% weapon damage is holy. But we are using Pillar of the Ancients to make it lightning. So summon an ancient pillar that deals 635% weapon damage is lightning, followed by 785% lightning damage is lightning over three seconds to enemies who remain in the area. The alternative to that, if we are going fire, would be explosive light. 
Uh, so this changes the damage to fire and releases bursts of energy that deals 830% weapon damage as fire to nearby enemies. So that's our two variations there. Our survival ability uh, skill is going to be Epiphany. Uh, so having Epiphany increases your spirit regen and enabling your, your melee attack to instantly dash your target for 15 seconds. So while this is up, you can actually target mobs that are away from you in Cyclone and it'll warp you to them. And then we're going to have the, the Rune, which is Desert Shroud. Infuse yourself with stand, reducing damage taken by 50%. So we want to have this up as often as possible. So hopefully 100% of the time, which we know won't be feasible, but as close to 100% as possible. Our movement ability that we're going to use is Dashing Strike. And we're using Blinding Speed. So we gain 40% increased chance to dodge for 4 seconds after using Dashing Strike. And it turns the damage cold. Not a big deal there. We're just using this to move around the map as we wish. Uh, we're also using Cyclone Strike. So Cyclone Strike. So it pulls enemies up to pulls up to 16 enemies within 24 yards towards you, followed by a furious blast of energy that deals 261% weapon damage. The damage, not the important part. The important part is the the range. So 24 yards. So we can change this to add the implosion rune to increase the damage to 34 yards. So this basically helps us drag mobs with us, create the big stack. So when it comes to our burst window, we can get maximum damage. And because we are also stacking AOE, it just helps blow everything up and help us progress through the, through the rifts. So this is where we're going to have a variation. So we can use sweeping wind here. So surround yourself in a vortex that continuously deals damage. Uh, the vortex lasts six seconds and a refresh each time you strike an enemy with a melee attack. Landing a critical hit has a chance to increase the vortex effects up to three stacks for a total of 315% weapon damage. So really though, we're using it as um, for the inner storm. So as long as your vortex is at three or more stacks, you gain eight spirits per second. And so that's to keep us at max spirits so we can throw it as many pillars as we, as we want. The alternative to this is let me just find it here i always forget where it's located is serenity so we can use serenity so basically we are putting the protective shield for three seconds and it makes us immune to all control impairing effects uh, particularly useful if you're caught frozen or about to get exploded on you can pop that as well as it helps us keep our squirt up up as long as possible and then we usually use Ascension as the rune for it to increase the duration to four seconds over, th over the three. So those are the two variations that we use there. Um, for our passive skills, so we have Seize the Initiative. Dealing damage to enemies above 75% increases your attack speed by 30% for four seconds. Uh, Beacon of Yitar, so I'm using this for the reduce uh, my cooldowns so that my epiphany is up a lot quicker. I'm also using Determination. Each enemy within 12 yards increases my damage. So that's good because I'm creating big stacks for AoE. And then also I'm using the Guardian's Pass. So while dual, dual wielding, you gain a 35% chance to dodge. And the other one doesn't matter for the two-hander because I'm not using a two-hander. It's just the dodge that I'm using there. And on my Ethereal Weapon, I am also getting the benefit of Alacrity, which is... Right here. Uh, increase the attack speed of the spirit gender. So that's not a big deal for me, obviously. I am using that ethereal weapon because of the affix on it, because it has to reduce the spirit cost. So because it has rapid strike on it. Alternately, if you get one of these on here, if you get one of those four on your weapon, you can either roll Harmony or you can roll Exalted Soul. So Exalted Soul increases our max spirit and it also increases the spirit regen. Harmony basically increases our elemental resistance, so it gives us more survivability. So those, that's the build there with the skills and the various passives that you can use. Now, optimizing our stats, what we want to do is, so for the helmet, we basically want a max roll for the increased wave of light damage, as well as a high crit roll. For shoulders, ideally, um, we want to have vitality uh, area damage, and if possible, if we could roll cooldown on here, it would be amazing. Uh, the other alternative would be is having resist all instead of armor. So here I have armor and uh, area damage. I would have preferred to have either cooldown or resist all instead of armor, but I'll take it. For our neck, for, for squirts, we would 
like to have elemental damage. So as we can have fire or lightning, depending on our build. And then we want critical hit damage and critical hit chance. Uh, this one's not too bad. I got the hit damage, hit chance, and then my alternative is area damage. So it's not bad, but I would strongly prefer to have elemental. So preferred elemental in both crits. For the chest, this is pretty good. I have dex, vitality, and resist all. Uh, the only thing that would be better is if I would have a better uh, unique property on here, or if I could get the 90% instead of the 94, so I'll be looking for a better one there. For our gloves, there are damage gloves, so you would like to, well, sorry, it's a survivability item, but we want damage rolls, so ideally we would want critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and cooldown reduction if possible. I have attack speed on here and critical hit chance. Um, I'll be looking for a better pair of those if I can find them. For the bracers, so we want the elemental damage so and critical hit chance. So here I got lucky with the primal. So I have max lightning and 6% critical hit chance. So that's what we strive for on our bracers. For the witching hour, we want high critical hit damage roll and high attack speed roll. Um, so that's what we're striving for there. Again, I got lucky with the primal. For the unity, ideally we would like to see double crit with the increased damage against elites. So I have a few primals here. I've been actually quite lucky. Um, usually I don't have this kind of luck. It was just fortunate from playing on other tunes that I had pieces that lined up well for this build. For our convention of elements, ideally we want to have both critical hit damage, critical hit chance, and then you can either roll cooldown on here or area damage. I'm playing around with area damage right now, but I'm thinking I want a little bit more cooldown, so I'll probably switch that in a little bit. But that's just because I don't have cooldown in a, on my shoulders or my gloves, and if I had that, then I'd keep area damage here. For the pants, we want high elemental roll and then resist all. The reason we want resist all on our armor pieces instead of armor is because dexterity changes into armor, so we want to pick up resist all where we can. And so here I have 20% lightning damage and I have resi resist all. So these are a good pair of pants for me. Um, for our boots, we want to have, <clears throat> excuse me, resist all, increase wave of light damage. And then also we want a good affix. So I have 177 or 200. It's mediocre, but at least I have the increased wave of light damage plus the resist all my boots. So they're good in that regard. For our weapons, we want high primary damage. So, and here I have also rolled on 10% damage as well as area damage. Um, so ideally, that's not too bad actually, I'd take that. You could also have, if you do get a chance to, if it's rolled with the plus damage on it, you can either take the area damage or you could do some cooldown because you can roll that. Or if you also find that you're having a little bit of trouble with elite packs, you could even take the increased damage to elites. Um, but I think the area damage or cooldown will serve you better in the long run. And then for the ethereal, we're looking for the one of the three unique properties, and then we just want high rolls. So this one's pretty decent. Um, I would like to have had a higher base damage roll, um, but all the other stats are are pretty decent. Like I got ninety four percent there for my modifier, so it's pretty decent in that regard. So I'm not complaining at all. So those are all the stats that I'd be looking for on my items. Like I said, my build, I've actually got pretty lucky with the with the, the primals that I have and my stats are pretty good. I haven't even augmented my set. I've done a 125. I think it's got a lot of great potential. The, the leaderboards are up there in the mid 140s right, more, right now for the, the leaders. It's definitely a solo 150 build potential. And this build is a lot of fun to play. It's got mobility, it's got potential to push. It's so much fun. It did take me a few runs to get used to it. Uh, just the play style was a little bit different than what I had been running. And so you just gotta create your big groups, watch for your, your DPS window on your COE, proc an Oculus Ring right leading into it, and then just go ham and watch everything blow up. It's so much fun once everything clicks and the, the damage is insane. Um, it was so much fun just, you know, progressing through the rifts and just watching how quickly I could just go through them. I could definitely see the 150 potential. I'm probably going to try to push for it too. Um, we'll see how the season goes. So I just wanted to say thank you everybody who voted on our poll this week. It was fun watching 
seeing how the votes came in. I was just curious, wasn't sure what was going to win, whether it was going to be the Necromancer or the Monk. It was fun making this video for the for you guys. If you have any comments, questions, or anything you want to discuss, please let us know in the comments below. As always, we appreciate any likes and subscribes. Uh, we're pushing close to the 2000 marker. We'd love to hit that. And as always, you can follow us on Twitch. Good luck, everybody.